All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are here. This is called Cruising with the Case Handler, a show initiated and put together by, of course, yours truly, David Squeeze and Adam Handler. We jumped it off just about at the beginning of the year. We've been having a lot of fun with the show, but more importantly, giving a lot of information. You know, I got a lot of attorneys around me today. I have an additional attorney with me today, so I got a lot we're going to be talking about. As a matter of fact, this attorney speaks in capacity of one of the things that I love to talk about. And of course, it's, you know, a lot of people out there who need to understand more about the O visa and uh, the P visa and so uh, forth. Sure but before we do that, ladies and gentlemen, let me cut off my other Zoom here because everybody else wants to speak to me. But cruising with a case handler. Now, before I introduce the attorneys, I am David Squeezanicky, a businessman, a broadcaster, amongst other things, a father. And uh, I have been on the station for well over... 20 years since 1996 i'm showing my age and one of uh the things that i'm so proud of it's actually doing a law show okay a talk show with attorneys and adam handler has been there for well over 15 years okay the most celebrated personal injury attorney in the entire caribbean community and obviously and evidently on this station 93.5 and we have taken it to uh, Facebook, ladies and gentlemen, the new era of social media, okay, that has um, pretty much taken over the world where people are now reaching out to us via the Facebook platform, the Instagram platform, you know, and uh, here we are, we're talking personal injury, we're talking immigration. Um, however, I would like to say this before I get into them in 60 seconds, 60 seconds rather, I want everybody that's actually listening to us on 93.5 FM, switch over to Facebook right now. Switch over because come the top of the hour, we're off the station. And I want to ensure that you're actually watching us, listening to us. There's a wealth of information that will be coming from these attorneys. Make sure you switch over to Facebook. If you don't know how to, I've got an idea. Walk over to your kid and say, hey, set me up on Facebook. Yeah, I said it. Okay. A lot of you need to get with the times. Come on. Just <laughs> find, a, find a millennial. Anywhere you can find one, just grab them. They've got nothing else going on in their lives anyway. You know, just grab them and say, you need to set me up on social media. You need to let me know how I can listen to Adam Handler, uh, the maestro Conrad Pollock, the maverick Nelson Madrid, and Alexandra Boss Lady Bondikoff. <laughs> I like uh, that. Oh, wow, wow. Oh, we got a nickname for her already. <laughs> All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, the other thing I would like, I mean, as I'm like, wow, a lot of people shooting. Now, the other thing that I would like for you to do as you um, switch over from 93.5 FM to David Squeezanik's Facebook page or the Case Handler pa Facebook page or PPID's Facebook page, I want for you to actually start sharing. Sharing is caring. Sharing is helping. I am quite sure every one of you watching this, listening to the station 93.5 FM, you know someone who's out of status. You know someone who needs help. You know someone who have made may have gone elsewhere and did not get help, okay? You know someone who did not do the right thing and decided not to go to an attorney, went to the lady on the corner of Garnier Road, the dude down the block on Eastern Parkway, and the guy over there, you know, on uh, Sutpin Boulevard. No, I don't advocate for that, okay? In all my years doing immigration talk, I know more than likely I could probably answer 90% of the questions, but I've never, ever answered one. Why? No. I consider myself, ladies and gentlemen, a true person to the game. And when you have professionals, you use professionals. I don't care what it's going to cost me. I prioritize myself. I put that money together and I go to the right person. Attorneys, that's what I do. And I want for you to do that. However, we've got free consultation that we're doing where immigration is concerned. And obviously, you know, personal injuries on a contingency basis. We need to go with cruising with the case handler. So right now, we got to remind you, this is Cruising with a Case Handler, brought to you by the law firm Pollock, Pollock, Isaac, and DeSico. You can call them at 844-774-3529. But I want to see more people sharing the page. We're up to, believe it or not, Adam, we're over 50 concurrent viewers right now and growing. So people, share the page. Share it in groups, share it on pages, share it on your timelines. That's what you got to do. Let's introduce, of course, the team right now, ladies and gentlemen. I've got, obviously, you heard him earlier, okay? The case handler, Adam Handler, the man who has settled well, 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 well over 
hundred million dollars for his clients and evidently majority of them being in the Caribbean community. So I want to welcome Adam Handler. I want to welcome Conrad Pollock, a managing partner. This guy actually works. How many love uh, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, people of his capacity who, you know, is working? I've been to law firm. They don't even participate. I mean, you just run the firm. But we've got Conrad Pollock, okay? We've got Nelson Madrid, okay? Call him the Maverick, okay? He's, in my opinion, excellent with people who are in removal proceedings, people who have gotten arrested. You gotten arrested, you paid your debt to society, you want to stay in the United States, you don't know if you can, you don't know if you will, you need to go with Nelson Madrid, ladies and gentlemen. Any kind of arrest that you have ever had and going through an immigration situation, make it Nelson. And of course, last but the best, of course, the only lady that's on the platform with us on cruising with a case handler happens to be Alexandra Bondikov. Did I pronounce it right, or Bondikov? Yes, you did, yeah. Yeah. All right. Both. Welcome to the show. Um, I Thank heard you. you're extremely proficient in the area of O visas, T visas, you know, and more. So we are looking forward to hearing a lot from you on that. You know, I've worked with a lot of uh, models throughout the years. You know, I have worked with a lot of entertainers throughout the years, a lot of reggae entertainers and other entertainers. You know, so we'll be talking more about that. But my colleague Adam Handler, I need for you to jump in and talk to us, man. I know you got a lot to say. You look, you look like it. Listen, I'm always, you know, over on Monday, it's all built up over the weekend. I keep thinking about the great work we're going to continue to do week in and week out. And uh, this is a perfect example of what we're doing to, to give back to the community that's embraced us. We have now four attorneys, one of them may be dying, but uh, four, four, four attorneys right now here to answer. Uh, for a minute there. Go on, go on. Here to answer questions. Um, personal injury, like you said, contingency fee. Not a lot of people understand <clears throat> how I'm compensated, how the firm is compensated in a personal injury case. In fact, I had a new ca case on Friday um, come to me. And last night he texted me saying, uh, how much do I owe you if we don't win this case? First thing I said to him is, how dare you even question whether or not we're going to win this right? case? Right? I'm not right? a guarantee right? result, but man, you know, you, you got to have a little faith in your boy. The second thing, the answer is absolutely nothing. I work on a contingency fee, meaning I get paid if and only if I'm successful for you. Uh, my fee comes out of the amount of money that we win for you. It's a standard contingency fee that all personal injuries, uh, all personal injury attorneys use. One third to the lawyer, two thirds to the clients, of course, all tax free money to the clients. So there's really no risk to you at all. No reason why you shouldn't have what you believe to be the best possible attorney fighting for you and your family when it comes to compensation for the medical bills, the time out of work and, and your pain and suffering. So, you know, we're, we're ready to do business this week. And as I said to you yesterday on Facebook and on the radio, and I'll continue to say so, you know, this week and over and over again until our offices down at 225 Broadway are reopened. We are still open for business. We're still settling cases. In fact, my um, my associate. Uh, uh, let me just let me just interject there because yeah. I like to make things clear because I had a weird call over the weekend. Yeah, it's on the oh, third floor, people. Third floor, one, two, three. Third floor, not higher. On the third floor. Let me repeat. Oh yeah, you never want to pass third the third floor. floor. First the of all, the commute That's is so it. much. The commute That's is so much shorter. You know, for me, people said, "Oh, you work." Because you know, so I used to work in that building uh, before, and people said, "Well, you know, you still work in that building." How's that working out? I go, well, the commute is shorter. So I'm only going to the third floor now. So right. uh, it's all good stuff. But, you know, Matt, my uh, associate extraordinaire is uh, is uh, is going to be on uh, teleconferences today with the court, uh, video conferences, uh, trying to settle cases. So we are moving cases. We are getting big bucks for our clients, even though the courts aren't physically open. I mean, we're over $10 million this year so far in 2000, uh, 2020. Um, which is unbelievable because uh, it seems like the, the world has come to a screeching halt, but we're still doing what we need to do to make sure that our clients are taken care of because we always say, and we'll say it again, they have one chance to get it right, right? No redos in personal injury, one chance, one choice, your case handler team. Um, but, uh, you know, you, you got to have that number saved and that's 844-774-3529 or 844-PPID. 
law. I want to give a shout out to all the first responders that did an amazing job over the weekend, all the healthcare workers that did an amazing job over the weekend, all the news media and the press that did an amazing job over the weekend covering the pandemic, including my brother Ian, who's uh, one of the head cameramen for Channel 11 News. And he's listening right now with his team and, and keeping everybody safe and informed. So thanks guys out there. <laughs> And let's get to it. A big week for the Case Handler team, a big week for PPID. We have uh, <clears throat> uh, a guest attorney on today speaking a little bit more about a specialized aspect of immigration law. So I say we jump right into it, Squeeze. Absolutely. And I will let, uh, I will let Conrad do the honors in actually introducing um, Al Alex. I call her Alex. That's what I'm going to call her. Everybody Alex. does. <laughs> okay. Um, it's a lot easier. Alex and her capacity at the law firm PPID. Once again, before we, I, I turn it over to Conrad in 10 seconds, everyone who wants to get a free consultation, you've got to call this number before the top of the hour. It's now 844, you got to call 844, okay? PPID Law, that's 844-774-3529. Every single person that wants a 100% free consultation, all before the top of the hour, off the air, you'll get that private consultation with an attorney. And the number once again is 844-774-3529. Slower, 844-774-3529. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get to the managing partner, the micro, Conrad Pollock, and let him introduce <clears throat> Alex and our capacity. Go ahead, Conrad. Good morning, everybody, and uh, welcome to Monday morning. Um, thanks for the introduction, and Squeeze, thanks for having us again. Uh, this is becoming part of my, part of our morning routine now. It's been, uh, what is it, a week and a half we've been doing this show now? Yeah. And um, as I said, it's becoming part of my routine. As I've mentioned several times, I have a real hard time getting up early in the morning. So this is helping me, uh, getting me, get me an early start on the day. Um, anyway, as I've mentioned previously, um, at our firm, we have a practice of bringing in the highest level professionals. Uh, since we've been together, since the firm has been, uh, since we were created, uh, I forget how many years ago, uh, it's always been a goal of mine, a goal of my partners to bring in the best. Um, that's why we have a, a gunner like uh, Nelson Madrid on the team, who if you have a deportation issue, he's your man. Uh, I know that if I was an immigrant in this country and I had an issue where immigration was trying to remove me, there's only one person that I'd call, and that would be Nelson Madrid, the maverick, as we all call him now. Um, by the same token, um, the young lady sitting to, I guess on the screen to my right, um, she, uh, Alex has been with us now for several years and, um, she has basically taken over our corporate practice. She runs it, uh, as well as, as well as, as it's ever been run. And one of her particular specialties, I don't know if I'd call it a specialty, she has many, but one of her areas of interest. Uh, happen to be uh, O and P visas. Always uh, not one of my forte uh, in terms of things that I've been doing over the years, although I certainly can handle myself. Um, this is her uh, her particular area of expertise. and That's why we wanted to bring her on, because I know a lot of the listeners out there have issues in terms of uh, 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 what those visas are, how to apply for them, how to maintain them, how to change status to them or from them. Um, and... Um, uh, so I wanted to bring her on and uh, let her talk a little bit about that. Before I get to that, though, I just want to tell you, um, with regard to developments that happened last week in terms of that ban, uh, the Trump ban on uh, immigration uh, or people with applying for green cards outside the United States. Um, again, as I said last week, and I'll say it again, it only applies to applicants that are not in the United States. Uh, and then only a limited number of those persons, typically people that are uh, relatives, uh, spouse or children of uh, permanent residents and um, employers who are sponsoring a prospective employee. Only those outside the United States were affected by the ban. There was a lawsuit filed on Saturday morning in federal district court in Oregon seeking a preliminary injunction on uh, uh, staying, hopefully staying uh, the implementation of that order. Uh, hasn't happened yet. Uh, I'm assuming it'll be uh, on, on the court's docket today or tomorrow. Um, and of course, as information uh, develops, we will provide it here as soon as we know. Um, anyway, without further ado, I want to introduce Alex Bondakov and let her get started. Alex, take it away. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Um, I'm very excited to be here. It's my first time on radio, so bear with me. 
Um, uh, I, um, I do love O's and P's, um, mostly because they're very fact intensive and it gives me an opportunity to learn a lot about uh, music um, uh, and uh, they're a lot of fun. Um, I will be speaking um, to the O and P as they pertain to the entertainment industry because the O1 actually covers a much wider scope. They can be for people in fields like science, uh, business, athletics. Uh, but as far as in the entertainment is industry is concerned, for performing artists, uh, O's and P's are the way to go. Um, the O1 is for individual performers, uh, dancers, actors, singers, musicians, um, um, who uh, have extraordinary ability in that field. And um, the way immigration determines whether somebody is, an, is extraordinary is have they won a Grammy, right? Um, if, they, if they have, like Adele, for example, they'll get an O1 visa. But not everybody is of that level. Um, so there's an alternative way to qualify as long as the artists can produce evidence that they meet at least three of six enumerated criteria. And they look at things like, have they won some lesser national awards? Is there a publication about them? Um, do they have commercial success in their country and internationally in terms of you know, CD sales, airplay? Um, do they uh, perform in a leading or starring capacity in, in a show? For example, many of my clients who happen to be Bulgarian, just as I am Bulgarian, um, have been invited to be uh, judges, either on The Voice or The X Factor or whatever, uh, things like that. Um, we're talking about individual performers. The P well, pretty, much, you got, you, pretty much, Alex, uh, you've got to be like the Michael Jordan in your class or your field, right? You've got to be um, like the Michael Jordan in your class or your field. Is that it? You have to be very high up there. But again, you know, not just the Michael Jordans, but people who... Um, you know, may may not have reason up there, but still have extraordinary ability. And the way you judge it is... Yeah, they have a prominence, they're well known. Exactly. Okay, and, but right. they, they have to prove that for the O visa, right? So they that's have exactly, to That's hard. exactly right. That's exactly right. Uh, and, um, you know, as, as you have probably heard on this radio many times, the devil is always in the details, right? Mm -hmm. So it depends on how strong of evidence the artist has, right? If they have publications, are they in um, major media? Is it in a trade journal, right? If they've won an award, what kind of award is it? Is it, you know, you know, record of the year in the particular country or, you know, the most played song or, you know, best new artist, things like that. So yeah, uh, you have to prove it. Uh, it. Like I said, it's very document intensive um, and it's, uh, you know, whether or not, you know, you qualify takes a lot of, um, research and analysis up front. Uh, but if you have at least three criteria, if you meet at least three criteria, then you know we can certainly make a very good case. What about recommendation letters? Um, can, can people um, get recommendation letters from other prominent individuals to- act, Certainly, absolutely, know? yes, absolutely. Um, and um, you know, when, when I've done my cases in the past, I've actually gone as far as getting a letter from the Minister of Culture attesting that this particular person has contributed a lot to the, to, to the culture, depending on what particular field of their endeavor is. If it's folklore music, you look for, you know, I don't know, folklore professor um, who would attest to their masterly level um, right. or, um, you know, producers. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, I, I have actually um, asked a couple of my celebrity friends to actually write letters for individuals who actually needed you know that to actually get them through the process you know and i mean they knew the individual and everything obviously and it was able to actually help them but um i've also seen where uh, a lot of clippings and write-ups on the internet also can assist and help the individual that's coming but one other question i wanted to ask you is the o visa exclusively for people in the entertainment field or let's say someone from jamaica um, has a uh, degree and is excellent in the capacity of marketing. Could they go for an O visa or would they go for another visa? The O1 covers many fields, not just entertainment, right? So uh, somebody in a degree mar marketing uh, could qualify potentially for an O1 in the field of business. Mm -hmm. right? But those are, um, in my experience, uh, a little bit trickier 
Uh, I think that, um, you know, artists get a lot of deference uh, uh, when CIS adjudicates uh, their um, uh, um, petitions. And it's because I think art is largely subjective. When you have a more concrete field that lends itself more to a quantitative analysis, um, it's trickier, but potentially yes. But again, a degree uh, on its own is not gonna qualify a person for no one in business. You know, we have Absolutely. to look at uh, right. their contributions, whether they're considered major in the field, whether this person has had publications, whether others in the field uh, use the work that he's done and, and his publications, whether they've been cited in journals, uh, things like that. So potentially, yes, um, but gotcha. again, the devil's yeah. in the details. Right, before you get to the P visas, I just wanted to, and, and Conrad, you can tell me, and Alex, you can tell me, or Nelson, um, and, and I do believe Conrad, your president um, advocates for this. Um, the, <laughs> the area where he's looking to have people who are more educated come into this country. So those individuals with degrees actually should come to the law firm PPID to speak with, about, speak with an attorney about getting sponsored in a job. That is quite possible, isn't it? Oh, sure it is. Um, Trump hasn't, uh, yeah, he's, he, he talks a lot about bringing in more people with education, with higher level degrees and speak English well. Uh, but the key word there is talks about it. Uh, yeah. In actual practice, he does, hasn't done much about it. Yes, uh, artist. Very, basically, the Trump administration, Credo, is keep them all out. All right. So, I mean, I mean, and I'm not just talking. That's not, not just my opinion. That's, that's just the way it is. Um, but uh, regardless, yes. Um, in terms of uh, an employer sponsoring an employee, uh, depends on the job. I mean, if, if, if a particular position requires uh, a level of education or a specific degree or high level degree, um, then that person needs to have it. And if they do, they can apply and, and get their green card that way, typically within a matter of a year and a half to two years. Or uh, for lesser skilled positions, uh, whether it's, uh, I don't know, a mechanic, a carpenter, nanny. cook, um, nanny, um, those are all possible as well. Different category under the law, but certainly doable in roughly the same amount of time. Um, so in fact, you mentioned nannies. I mean, I can't even think of how many nannies uh, have come through our firm over the years uh, in terms of getting their green cards. Um, certainly uh, still available, not quite as uh, simple as it used to be back in the old days, uh, but certainly still possible, absolutely. The key is um, when applying for a green card, uh, through an employment category, you have to maintain lawful status. Uh, if you don't, basically that opportunity is gone. You must be in lawful status. And again, with the ban that is has not is apparently about to take effect, or maybe won't, we don't know yet. Um, you have to be in the United States. If you're not in the United States, you're not going to be able to apply for your green card. You can apply for a work visa. You could still apply for that O or that P or that H two or whatever it is. Uh, if mm -hmm. you're outside the United States, but no green cards, at least that's what the ban is proposing. Okay. hope that answered your question. Yeah, you sure did. All right, once again, folks, if you're just joining us, this is Cruising with a Case Handler. I'm speaking with Alex on O visas and P visas. I want to remind everyone, we're going to the top of the hour in a couple of minutes, so I need for everybody to switch over to Facebook. Go to Facebook, go to David Squeeze Anarchy's Facebook page or the Case Handler's uh, Facebook page or Pollock, Pollock, Isaac, and the Seco. That's the PPID's. Uh, Facebook page and follow us there. Now, the other thing that I'd like to say is if anyone have any immigration questions, now is the time to actually place your immigration questions on Facebook. So this way I can read them off to the attorneys or feel free to call 844-774-3529. Once again, I said, if you call us before the top of the hour, we're going to ensure that you get a free immigration consultation. Now, why am I pushing this so much before I get back to Alex is because ladies and gentlemen, they're getting a ton of immigration consultation calls. And guess what? You've got to set up an appointment. They have to set up an appointment for you. You don't want your appointment being all the way down on the list. That's one. Two, um, Adam, Adam can tell you we broke the server pretty much on Saturday. I don't know what happened with the system with so many calls that came in. But evidently, that's fixed right now, right, Adam? Uh, let's turn on your microphone here. All right. There. I just turned it on. Good. Uh, absolutely fixed, but those are good problems to have. When so many people are calling that you actually crash your phone server, 
Um, that's pretty remarkable. And uh, those, a lot of those people have consultations set up um, and we're just looking forward to doing good things for them. That, that's exciting stuff. Okay, good. 844-774-3529, 844-774-3529. Nelson, I believe you took care of a friend of mine who was up in uh, New Britain, Connecticut, who called and said that you took care of her friends, okay, and you retained them, okay? You need to talk to you more about that. They said, squeeze, what about the discount? I'm like, hey, listen, I, I, okay, legally, I can't do anything with fees. All I can do is suggest that they give you some discount, all right? So I don't know if you heard about that, all right, Nels? No, I, I have it, actually. Okay. <laughs> All right, and we'll talk more about that. Very important. Sure. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, 60 seconds before we get to the top of the hour, we will be off of 93.5 FM. But we implore every single person to get on Facebook. Social media is the new radio. Radio is not going anywhere, but social media is the new radio. That's the reason why PPID is here. That's the reason why we're cruising with the case handler 8.30 every morning on 93.5, but also on Facebook. And remember... Place all your questions on Facebook. We will answer your questions. We'll talk more about different kinds of visas. Maybe you are here in the United States. You'd like to find out more as to how you can get into status. Maybe someone overseas needs to come to the United States. Let us help you by way of the law firm PPID right here on Cruising with the Case Adler. The number to call is 844-774-3529 for your free immigration consultation. That's 844 774 Three, five, two, nine. Let's switch back over to it's Alex and talk more on P visas. What are P visas, Alex? So P visas, the P one is the uh, equivalent of the O one for individuals, for, but for groups, right? For more than one performer, and the criteria track the ones of the O one category. So if a group um, has an international acclaim, they will have to prove the exact same things as an O one individual will have. To um, it's important here um, uh, that not, uh, it's the accomplishment of the group as a whole that matter, not the individual performers in it. So if you have a super group, like you have four people that are all one caliber themselves, but they haven't performed together for over a year and the group itself hasn't, you know, doesn't have the, the documents to, to prove that the group as such has achieved national acclaim, it's not going to work. There's other ways to make it work, but not as a group. The P2 is also for entertainers, but it's a very particular subcategory. It's for performers who um, are performing in an exchange program that's been approved by the government. Frankly, I've never seen one of these. It's very limited. Um, and I just, as, you know, for 17 years, I've never had a single P2. What I have seen a lot of is P3s, um, and those are um, for performers, individual or as a group that come uh, to perform in a culturally unique program. And cultural uniqueness uh, can be, um, you know, has to have elements that are very particular to a particular country or a region, right? Mm -hmm. I think reggae would be a perfect example uh, yeah. in this case. Um, and it doesn't have to, the entire performance doesn't have to be culturally unique. It could be a fusion performance as long as it contains elements of that particular traditional culture or it could um, use an instrument that is specific. Um, the example that comes to mind is uh, the didgeridoo, right? I mean, it's, it's a very distinct instrument. So it could be, you know, um, a regular pop performance, but they're using didgeridoos that may qualify as a, as a P1, uh, as a P3, excuse me. Um, the, the length of time that you get on a P visa is one year. Or if the tour is shorter, it will be limited to the duration of the, of the tour. The O1 can be for three years. Uh, but again, if it's for a performing artist who's coming here on a tour, uh, USCIS will require a confirmation uh, of every single date. Uh, and that, as a practical matter, becomes a problem because not many people plan you know, three years in advance. So gotcha. these are the distinctions between the O's and the P's. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, cruising with a case handler. I'm speaking with one of the attorneys from the law firm, Pollock, Pollock, Isaac, and Seco, call it PPID. And she is proficient in the capacity, not just of the O visas, but yes, the P visas and a whole lot more. We're very happy in having her on the show here and hopefully we'll have her in the future again. I, I'm quite sure, Alex, that you're gonna be getting a lot of folks coming at you about the O visas and the P visas. I mean, 
I mean, myself as a businessman, I've kept quite a few events here in the United States where we had to fly a ton of artists up and we had to work on their visas. And I want to um, appeal to all the entertainers out there who have been asking me about this, all the people out there who have been asking me about this area, reach out to the firm, get a consultation, speak with them more about how you can get that entertainment visa, how you can get that O visa, that P visa. Alex is your woman, all right? Can't say you're a man, you're a woman, all right? So make that call and the number happens to be 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. Gonna switch it over to personal injury for a second. Don't want you to feel left out here, Mr. Handler. Never, are- never, never do. You know me. I- I'm all about getting the information out to the people. We can talk immigration until we're all blue in the face. As a- And as a white guy, like I said yesterday, that's pretty <laughs> easy. easy. <laughs> all right. So let's, um, we're, we're going to be getting that because I've got a couple of questions for um, Nelson Madrid also. But let's um, remind people. And one of the things I like about the, the fact that we've got the personal injury capacity at the firm, the immigration capacity, and yes, the criminal defense capacity, they're very, very important, is a lot of people do not know, and I keep repeating it, but it's the truth, okay? Um, A lot of people do not know if they're out of status and they get into an accident that they can still seek, of course, compensation. And you have done that for several, if not hundreds of clients um, over the past 15 years. Okay, so I wanted for you to expound on that and also, of course, give a true success story. Yeah, of course. I mean, I would estimate that probably 20 percent, maybe a little bit less, maybe 15 percent of the the cases that we handle here at the firm for personal injury uh, victims uh, are out of status residents um, uh, of uh, of the United States and, and, and are here, you know, either overstaying a visa or how to need to have an adjustment done. Uh, in another capacity, but you know that's that's what we handle, and absolutely we, we say this and we stress this all the time that it doesn't matter uh, who you are or where you're from. If you're hurt uh, in New York, uh, you are absolutely entitled to money under the law, and we've done some incredible things not only for uh, people that are out of status living here in New York, but people that were visiting and have since gone back home. Uh, to their countries, Guyana, Trinidad, Jamaica, and we actually send the money uh, or able to wire the money down to them um, to um, uh, to compensate them for all their losses. So we've done some incredible things, extending visas uh, and adjusting status so people can stay here, get the medical treatment they need. We've had uh, situations in which people have been critically injured, uh, required extended hospitalization. We had a one one kid that was uh, airlifted from the accident scene. There was no way he was going back to Jamaica in, in wow. two weeks when he was scheduled to. So Nelson had helped me with that case. Um, and uh, it just shows you, you know, a true team effort. Um, also, a, a lot of issues we've had here, uh, they don't have, somebody doesn't have a social security number. So you get somebody $800,000, you know, what yeah. are they supposed to do with it? Yeah, They're what are they not gonna, Certainly not going to... Um, you know, put it in a, in a coffee can and bury it in the backyard. In fact, some people say, oh, well, my uncle, you know, he, he's, he's a green card holder or, or my aunt, she's a citizen. Can't we just put the check into her name? I go, uh, yeah, if you want that $800,000 to go away like that, uh, we're able to, through our contacts in the banking system, um, able to set up bank accounts for people uh, using alternate sources of identification. I so, never thought about that, you know. I'm very happy that you brought that up. I never thought yeah. about oh, that. Oh, yeah. Oh, and yeah. I, I mean, wish, they just I, hit me. I'm like, whoa. What I mean, the most I've ever gotten for an SS resident um, here in New York is, is $2 million. And mm-hmm. uh, we were able to open that bank account. And their money is invested. And their money is growing. And their money is working for them. And they'll never have to worry about anything for the rest of their lives. So you know, we I think to realize what you just said, and you need to repeat that part because people who are watching this and we, we do replays on 93.5, you just said the most that you've gotten for someone who's out of status, okay, is $2 million. Do you know how many people are listening to you and said, did he just said out of status and they got $2 million for a settlement? Yeah. So yeah, it was incredible. And I remember when I went down uh, to Jamaica back in November, we were in Montego Bay and we were mm-hmm. flooded um, with all the hotel workers who 
I was speaking to, of course, chatting it up what we do here in New York and in, in talking about the amount of money that we're able to get people two million dollars in the United States down in Jamaica, or not even two million. I mean, those are extraordinary numbers. But what about the the person that I get uh, 180,000 for 180,000 American? And then they're going back home to Jamaica, what you're able to do there. And I remember getting this overwhelming sense of pride in that really changing lives. We can change lives up here in the United States, but we can change generations uh, down in Jamaica if you choose to go back to, to home with, with you know, two million or a million six or uh, $900,000 American, truly incredible. And those are, those are my true life success stories. So, you know, you always like talking about those sexy cases um, and when somebody got an accident and this is what happened with the judge. Th that's my success story today. That's my testimonial. Being able to change lives, having people come up here or having people go back home. Um, people text me, uh, they were able to uh, put on uh, a wedding for 300 people or buy a home for their mother or finally, I don't know what it is. A lot of Jamaicans seem to have property but not really doing anything with it. And a lot of people call me, I finally was able to you know, build that house on my father's land that, that I had uh, in the family for, for 60 years. So thank you for that. Really <clears throat> changing lives and that's what we do here at the firm. And we're thrilled to do it. Nothing makes us happier than being able to say that justice was served. Personal injury, it's money. That's the way the civil system works. But in immigration, justice is served when we're able to advocate for our clients and, and get them legal status uh, as the law dictates. Sometimes you got to navigate through it. Sometimes there's loopholes. And sometimes, you know, there's, there's, as Alexandra said, a lot of documents involved. But we are dedicated to providing the best possible service for our client. We are dedicated to achieving the best possible outcome, no matter how long it takes. And that's the difference of Pollock, Pollock, Isaac DeSico. That's the difference of the case handler team. And that's why I don't mind listening to these guys talk immigration all morning long, because it's so exciting, the amazing work that we do for our, for, for our clients. Absolutely. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, Adam Handler, the case handler. So if you ever get hurt in an accident, Listen, the proof is in the pudding. Go to the site, the website, thecasehandler.com, and you will see the millions of dollars in settlement on that website. Ruthie does an excellent job in actually putting up those testimonies and organizing it in such an easy way so that you can actually see and read through those. So, yeah, we're yeah, actually jump in for I'm sorry, if I could just yeah. jump in for a second and throw out something that's kind of important. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of those people that Adam uh, represents and a lot of the recoveries that he gets for, for his clients, mm -hmm. um, most of those people, or certainly a lot of them, are here temporarily. Um, they might be on a temporary a tourist visa or a student visa, or, you know, and have to go back. Uh, these cases, uh, these personal injury cases, don't happen overnight. It takes sometimes months, years for them to be completed. So very frequently, Adam comes to us saying, hey, I have this client who... Uh, they're not going to be going to court for another year. So is there anything we could do to keep them here? That's where we come in. And that's why we make such a good team. You know, we find ways to get people uh, extensions of their visas, find ways for them if they have to leave to get them back into the United States. You know, again, this is why we make such a good team. We, in, in fact, that's how we met uh, in, in terms of doing cases like that. When, he, when Adam wasn't uh, part of our firm, uh, it's become... Uh, a, a joint effort. We work together very well, and it's been um, going well now. How long is it, Adam? Six years? Yeah, it's almost six um, years now. So we'll hopefully be doing it for another 50 or so. Uh, well, are you be waking up this early uh, for the next 50 years? Oh, my God. We'll wheeling you, I'll be wheeling you to this broadcast. <laughs> All right. So once again, folks, cruising with a case handler. When it comes to personal injury, I want for everyone to know that here in the tri-state area, area, respectively, New Jersey and Connecticut, you need to call the firm. You need to call the case handler himself because, uh, Adam, you've got one choice, one chance, and who are you? Your case handler. There you go. So make that call now or store the number, dial the number, let it ring. The number is 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. Got a question here. Um, that I need to jump into. Uh, uh, well, the first one is, um, this one is for Nelson, as I, as I promised. This gentleman here was on a drug, drug um, convic conviction. He was in jail for 10 years, okay? Happened to be a friend of mine who I know very well. He hit me up, went to school with him, all right? Grew up with him also in the, in the Bronx. 
and he was um, he was convicted, okay, and he went to jail for 10 years. He's saying that no one is harassing him, no one is troubling him. He does not have a citizenship. He wants to know if he can travel to Jamaica, okay? Um, I, I mean, I, I know what you're gonna tell him, but I wanted you to tell him and you have hey, yourself. So, you know, typically when someone is incarcerated for a year or more, mm -hmm. um, that obviously, uh, leads me to believe that the charges were somewhat serious. There's a big difference, especially when you deal with drugs, the type of drug, the quantity. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I would need more facts. Um, he said it has to do with conspiracy. Right, again, I would need more facts um, because there's a big difference between sale and possession. Um, conspiracy to distribute, you know, again, I, I don't feel, I can tell you this, my general answer would be, do not travel. Exactly. I mean, undoubtedly, I mean, that's my go-to, you know, just yeah, based on the yeah, length yeah, of the yeah. sentence, yeah. which he served. Now, immigration is actually, a, a, or ICE is very peculiar. Mm -hmm. um, ICE does not do things methodically. Nothing with ICE is black and white. You know, I've had clients get arrested their first day of probation. I've had clients get arrested their very last day of probation. I've had clients go to court and get arrested in court. You know, I've had clients serve a, a 10 year sentence and all of a sudden when they least expected, you know, someone's knocking up on their door at six o'clock in the morning, you know, we're looking for John Jones, you open the door and they're like, I'm sorry, what is your name? And they take you into custody. Um, so I guess don't sleep on ice is my point. Um, because they haven't come for you, it doesn't mean they won't. Um, right, right. But again, I, I would, I would like to know more about the, the criminal case um, and his involvement, you know, um, because again, you could be a main player, you could be someone not as important as the rest. Um, it all depends. I mean, I have a case right now where my client pled guilty to, um, I think it was transporting checks. Um, it was federal charges, um, but my client wasn't a key player. Um, my, we just had my client apply for citizenship. So, you know, again, a lot of this is fact driven. You know, I'm not trying to dance around the question. I just, again, no, I I understand. Understand. I right. Just, and, and, and something of that magnitude, I, I would suggest to anyone out there, as a matter of fact, if you have ever been arrested, it's not just about turning in the disposition to, you know, Nelson Madrid, the maverick, the top gunner, when it comes to anyone who have been arrested and you're looking, you're seeking, you know, um, your, your status in the United States. But it's more about understanding the facts of the case. It's more about understanding what happened in detail. Hence, you know, Nelson can be very surgical with your case in handling it, okay, for you in front of the Department of Homeland Security. So once just again, to add, just to yeah. add, I'm sorry, Squeeze, you know, I would mm -hmm. want to see the indictment, the criminal complaint, like, as you said, not just the disposition. Right. You know, because all of these documents can potentially come back to haunt you. And while you think you weren't a key player, the documents reflect otherwise. Right, right, exactly. And, and you know, and then there are the areas of uh, expunging and vacating and all of that. And that's one of the reasons why I say to everyone, go to PPID, go to them. They've got criminal defense attorneys, they've got different, different departments of the full service law firm. So right now, people, I know you're watching this. Do me a favor, dial the number, store the number. Even if you don't need them now, we say store the number. If you do need them, you need immigration help, you only need one firm. So make sure you reach out to them. The number is 844-774-3529. That is 844-774-3529. Easily remembered, 844-PPIDLAW. Um, Adam, you look like you want to say something. Uh, you have that look I always on. want to say something. It's like, uh, you know, there's an expression. <laughs> like, How's that? Why is <laughs> it, it, I always want to say something and I'm just listening to Nelson and he used to use the adjective or use adjective surgical. You know, lawyers are professionals. Doctors are professionals. Our, our, our job, even though it's not med treating somebody medically, it's still providing a diagnosis. And to provide a diagnosis, you need all the information possible. So uh, no doctor would diagnose you with any kind of condition or disease if they didn't have the radiology reports or the blood tests uh, to have a full picture. Just hearing it 
directly from the patient isn't enough. And, and that's what we do. That's the, again, it's the, same the you do. It's the same thing you do as a personal injury attorney, as the case handler, where I have heard you talk about situations where you get cameras from stores near, nearby. You, sure. you, you research I mean, and investigate. My ability to be successful is based on the evidence. That's photographs, witness statements, um, videos, police reports, things like that. But that's what, us, that's what we do here at PPID. We're not just fly by the night, flying by the seat of our pants, trying to figure a way um, you know, to earn a fee and, and move on to the next case. We really you know, dig deep into these cases. And, and Nelson, I've seen him, he's actually you know, gone to people that are locked up. You know, we'll go to prison and, and, and speak, with the, speak with the inmate to see, you know, exactly what's happening and if, if we can help them. And Nelson will be the first one to say, sorry, there's, there's really nothing we can do for you. But if we can help, uh, you know that he's going to give it uh, his all. You know that Alexandra will give it her all. You know, Conrad will certainly give it his all um, and encourage the rest of the people to, to really get a successful result. And again, that, that's, that's what came across my mind when I heard Nelson talking, because that's, that's really what we're doing here. You know, we're providing information. We're definitely uh, advertising our firm. But in a way, I feel like these, these broadcasts are like extended interviews uh, for us. You know, we're, we're letting everybody know out there, you know, how, how we conduct ourselves, you know, what, what we believe in, what we fight for. And if what we're saying makes sense to you, then you'll have our number saved. Uh, you may not need us now, but you, you may need us in the future. And you certainly may know somebody now that does need us. So uh, we can't give out the number enough. It's 844 PPID law. If you're watching this on Facebook, you know, we're giving this information absolutely free, no strings attached. I always say tip your waiter, share the page, comment on the page. That's a way for it to spread, to go viral, um, and, and to let other people know out there that may not know, you know, what we're doing, how we're able to really do some incredible things for the people that trust us with their one and only chance. Oh man, man, listen, listen to you about going viral and all of that. You seem like well, you, no pun, in, no pun intended, but you, you know what I mean. <laughs> all right, all right. So here's a quick immigration question as we we flip it in um, to the immigration question here. Um, my friend, this one is from, um, let's say Shelley. All right, it says my friend is here with her three kids, a few years now, and they're out of status. Her fiance applied for a citizenship but not yet received it. Would it be wise for her to get married? And if she does, would she receive their work permit? I'll take that one. Um, as usual, we need some more information in order to answer that question uh, perfectly. But I will assume her fiance is a US citizen. And I will assume that she and her children all entered with visas and have overstayed. If that is the case, then yes, she should definitely marry her fiance as a U.S. citizen, once, he's, once he is a U.S. citizen, he can apply for his wife. And if the children are under 18 at that time or at the time of the marriage, uh, the U.S. citizen spouse can also apply for the children. They can all get their green cards. Right. Typically in New York, the process is taking roughly a year and a half, two years right now. Um, they can get permission to work in roughly six months. If the, um, the fiance is um, a permanent resident, that's not going to happen. He has to be a citizen. In addition, if the woman and her kids did not enter with visas, or if they did enter with visas but lost those passports that they entered with, it would be they wouldn't be able to apply for their green cards in the United States. Um, there are some exceptions to the rules I'm throwing out right now, but generally that's how it works. Okay. All right. So um, here's a situation. Uh, this gentleman here, let's call him Wolf. <laughs> All right. Um, says what I name did you pick? Wolf, Wolf, the Wolf, Wolf. Wolf. Yeah, I mean that's that's he's got that nickname here. So all right. Oh, you send in the Wolf. All right, the Wolf. Wolf. He said, um, "I have a question." In 2006, I was told by a man that he worked, um, who works at the British Embassy, and he could get me a visa to go to um, Britain. I was a bit skeptical at first, but I went through with it. I gave him the passport, gave him the money. And uh, um, he was able to, I was able to go, I went to England, spent two months and came home and thought that I could get a US visa to visit my siblings. Um, also, his mom is also filing for him. I'm, his mom is filing for him. 
and he has tried twice. He got turned down for the um, visitor's visa. He's not wondering if the filing by his mom is going to get, um, it's gonna, it's, if he's gonna be affected by that. Uh, I'm not really sure where the question is, but Alex, you wanna take that one? Show him what you got. <laughs> Pretty much, he screwed up by doing something illegal by getting a, 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 um, a visa to go to England, which has nothing to do with the U.S. Okay, right. but now he wants to get a U.S. visa, and also his mother is filing for him. So he wants, and he got turned down for the U.S. visa. Okay, they didn't say tell him that that's what it was, the English thing, but he wants to know about the, the situation with the filing that his mom is doing are in process. Alex, you take it. <laughs> so uh, the, the the visa for the UK was fraudulent is what you're saying? Or yes. no? He, yes. But he did say yes. that he went to England and worked and came back. So well, I, well, it appears that it was fraudulent. I mean, the, the bottom line is that he got somebody who works in the embassy, gave them his passport and money. And he got the visa. So it, 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 the situation about the is, British embassy. Yeah, that, yeah, I'm just telling about that part. Yeah. But now he went to file for a U.S. visa. He did, and he got twice, and he got turned down on that. Okay. So did they get so? Number one, I would like to know why he was turned down for the U.S. visa. Mm -hmm. Often, when people get turned down, it's because they can't meet the burden of showing that they have the intent to come home after mm -hmm. the you know the, the visit in the United States is over. Uh, right. If that's the case, he should be reapplying. Generally, though, if uh, the consulate knows about some facts that uh, would suggest that there's fraud, right. uh, and that 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 mostly goes towards you know fraudulent statements that he has made to the U.S. authorities. I mean, I'm not sure how the U.S. would know what happened with the with the British visa, but if if they're denying for fraud, mm -hmm. they will say it in the denial letter, they would say we're denying you on, on this and such, such and such provision for fraudulent misrepresentation. Okay, yeah. so there is a waiver for this, but it gets too complicated. Um, so number one, why was the visa denied? Um, if it's just for not being able to meet the burden of showing the non-immigrant intent, he can reapply. If it's for uh, fraud or misrepresentation, then he has bigger problems. Now his mother is a US citizen you mentioned, right? Yeah. Okay, and mm -hmm. what is his, is he married? Is he not married? Didn't say all of that. Okay, so the mother has filed an I-130 for him or not? No, I didn't say all of that. Okay, so uh, it, it really depends. So the mother can file the petition for her son, uh, it, you know, at, at any time. It has nothing to do with whether or not he will, uh, you know, ultimately mm -hmm. get the visa because mm -hmm. at that time the inquiry shifts from um, the uh, relationship that qualifies him for the immigrant visa petition to whether or not he uh, is eligible for the visa itself. So any misrepresentation would come up at that point and then maybe years from now, right? So the mother, yes, the mother can file the I-130, but in order for us to know whether or not he will be ultimately successful in coming here, we need more. He needs to call. That's There's great. also another another factor involved, and I've mentioned this a few times, and so this is a fairly common situation with, with the uh, our listening community. Um, as I've said, the law presumes that all persons trying to come to the United States are intending immigrants. They're intending to come here. To come. Right. If that person, it sounds like he's been trying to get a tourist visa to come here. Uh, if his mother has applied for him to get his green card, it's going to be very difficult for him. Putting everything else aside, the fraud or whatever is there, it's going to be very difficult for that person to obtain a tourist visa because that's a temporary visa. If his mother's applied for him to get a green card. He's already indicated an intent to come to the United States permanently. He can't have the same intention at the same time. Or rather, you can't have the two different intentions, to stay here permanently, to come here temporarily, simultaneously. So when his mother applied for him to get him his green card, basically that eliminated most most likely any chance of him getting a tourist visa to come here. Gotcha, gotcha. Once again, folks, Cruising with the Case Handler. That's the name of the show, 8.30 weekdays on 93.5 FM. And obviously on Saturdays at 7 p.m., Sundays at 12 noon, we had a wonderful show yesterday. I want for everyone right now to actually store the number for the law firm. That's what I want for everyone to do. Store the number by dialing it right now, ladies and gentlemen, okay? And that number happens to be 844-774-3529. Dial the number, store the number. 
If you would like to get a free consultation with one of the immigration attorneys, make the link, make the call now. Your consultation will be free off the air. That number once again happens to be 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. Also want to say, if you get hurt in an accident, reach out to the case handler. Okay, his track record says it all. Call him, store his number, 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. Coming up about an hour since we've been on, uh, lady and gentlemen. Anyone wanna add anything before we conclude? I think we're gonna bring on our partner, Fred DeSico on Thursday. Uh, oh. He will be talking um, uh, real estate matters uh, specifically, but Fred, uh, DeSico, um, the D in PPID, um, is the head partner of the uh, real estate and transactional department. Um, a lot of people asking about what they need to do about rent right now, both yeah. as tenants and landlords. Um, we represent both sides and he'll be giving some insight as to that. So make sure you tune in Thursday. Uh, we'll bring him on uh, first thing as we did with Alexandra and, and hopefully uh, Alexandra will want to come on again. Uh, we, we, we went nice and easy on her today, not with the really tough questions, but she, she's, she's pretty, she's pretty amazing and uh, it's going to be hard to stump her, but you know, we, we tried today. We didn't, we weren't able to, so we'll see what we can do next time, but we're looking no, forward it's, to that. Again, it's just, I'm sorry, Adam. No yeah, no problem. There. Again, it's just an indication of you know, we're, we're trying to show everybody out there that, we have people, we have lawyers at our firm that know their stuff, um, and we cover every aspect of immigration law. And as the, as the, these weeks will proceed, uh, you'll all be seeing it squeeze. You'll see the type of professionals we have working at our firm, and they know every inch of immigration law. So um, I, I think it's an exciting process. But again, I'm, I'm thanking you for having us here to show everybody and for everyone to see the type of services we, we're able to provide. Oh, that's beautiful. And, and, and as I've asked before, I would love to get a 60 second spot from each person. Just, you know, decide it. Hi, I'm Conrad Pollock and you know, you can catch me on blah, blah, blah. Hi, I'm Alex. And you know, uh, hi, I'm the Maverick, Nelson Madrid. I'd love to get that from you guys also. So we can put that in full rotation across our programming here. I'm going to make mine a musical one. I'm going to do something on the piano and I'll do something. Hey, that would be great. <laughs> Advertising. I have to come up with an immigration related song. <laughs> maybe i'll join you with my guitar then you know? there you go. <laughs> all right um alex i want to say thanks for you know coming on the show cruising with the case handler and shedding light on the o and p visas really appreciate that thank you so much and hopefully you can break up this uh male dominated show here in the morning from time to time you know with all these guys here so it's a pleasure seeing your face here and actually getting a wealth of information from you in the capacity of immigration where O's and P's are concerned. So thanks again for being on the show. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Nelson, Top Gunner, the Maverick. Thank you so much for being here, man. I'm very happy that you are there to help out a lot of people within my community and other communities, especially those that have had a run in with the law and has passed that. However, I want to fly straight and stay here in the United States or find out how they can live their lives here in the United States, file for citizenship and more. So thanks again to you also. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Okay. And uh, Conrad, thanks again for being the maestro. Um, tomorrow, I would love, we, we totally forgot to speak about it while we were on 93.5 FM. We were talking about people who want to attempt or go ahead and try to file, you know, for file their cases themselves and you were warning me saying, you know, one should not necessarily do that because there's a lot of, you know, uh, situations that could arise from that. So let's talk a little bit about that as soon as we get on tomorrow. Absolutely. At 8 30, you know, remind, I'll right. remind you first thing in the morning because that, that yeah. is an important topic. Things have changed. Things are uh, it's so much more difficult now. And there's so many more pitfalls that, uh, that an individual can encounter if they try to do an application themselves. The main one these days being the new public charge rules. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm afraid a lot of people out there really just don't understand or even know what it is. 
And mm. it's going to happen. I, I don't know what it is. I don't know what a public charge well, is. Even, there are even <laughs> lawyers out there. I mean, I'm still, we're all still trying to figure out exactly what it means because it's brand new. And in mm -hmm. fact, another thing that happened this past weekend, um, the Supreme Court, uh, there were, I believe there was an, an action where um, a motion had been made in court to stay implementation of the new public charge rule and the Supreme Court turned it down. So it is going to be effectual, effectual right away. And again, there are even lawyers out there right now that don't know the ramifications of this new rule. And people out there trying to adjust their status based on a marriage, which, you know, in the past, they might have been able to have friends that they were able to do it successfully. It's going to be a lot, a lot more difficult going forward. And these days, if you apply for adjustment of status and are denied, they don't just forget the application was denied and put you into a pile and that you never hear from immigration anymore. No, these days you do hear from immigration because they send you what's called a notice to appear for immigration for removal proceedings. So it's a potentially very serious matter. So uh, we'll talk about it tomorrow in more detail. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 critical and very important, Conrad. That what did I say to you yesterday, Squeeze? An individual that represents themselves has a fool for a lawyer. An attorney. So yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll make sure we we press that point home tomorrow. Absolutely. All right, and, and, and with that said, Adam, um, why don't you take us home? Monday, April 39th, no, 27th. Um, we're here, we're giving back. Uh, I can't stress to you enough our sincerest desire to showcase our firm, what we do, and, and give you your uh, legal question, you know, provide uh, quality legal answers to your legal questions, absolutely free of charge. No strings attached. Again, we just ask that you share the page, like the page, let other people know about what we do. Um, we're going to come out of this stronger as a firm. We're going to come out of this stronger as New Yorkers. We're going to come strong, out stronger than we were as Americans. And we cannot wait um, to have everything in row uh, when we're ready to go. So please give us a ring, save the number. Hope to hear from you soon. Tune in tomorrow, 8.30, Thursday. Fred, the, uh, well, man, we got to come up with a big one. Uh, I thought you said you're calling him the Dean. The, the, what? I the Dean? Said, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, Fred, the, the deal dean. maker, the CEO. No, we'll, 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 deal maker. The negotiator. How about the, the negotiator? Yeah, the negotiator, <laughs> right. We'll, we'll have some fun. He's, uh, he's actually the most charming out of all the partners at PPID, and that includes myself as well. Uh, we vote Fred. Uh, he's the guy that gives the speeches at our holiday party. So That's you know true. we're going to be, uh, you know we're all going to be in for a real treat on Thursday. Wow. So thanks again for tuning in. Uh, we love what we do and we love sharing it with you. God bless. And as we leave, ladies and gentlemen, we, we must remind you this has been an attorney advertisement brought to you by the law firm of Paula Pollock, Isaac, and Seco. And of course, prior results do not guarantee similar outcome. However, however, here's what I'm saying to you: dial their number, store their number. Whenever you need an attorney, you listening to this on the station 93.5 on Facebook, you're in the tri-state area, you only need one law firm. So make sure you make that call, 844-774-3529. You also get a free consultation. Call them now, 844-774-3529. And I'll leave you with this. Don't just get the free consultation, okay? Retain them. I told you all the secret yesterday, what you got to do. I can't let them hear that. Okay. Adam got wind of it, you know? So 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. Thank you all so much for sharing the page. Tune in. If you're in the tri-state area, even outside, you can use the internet um, to 93.5 WVIP FM. And uh, we'll be on at 8.30 tomorrow morning with more information Yes on personal injury. Yes on immigration. Thank you all so much. It's been great. Thanks for having us.